projects and research for STEM tour in the International Grand Challenges Engineering Research Conference in Taylor's University, Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Engineer Donald Joseph Katapa. Yeah, and so thank you po sa magandang introduction para sa akin. Let me just share my video as well para makita niyo naman po ako ano po. <laughs> so, ayos naman po ba yung audio ko? Can someone confirm? Okay naman po, okay naman po. Okay po. Yes, thank sir. you. Thank you for the confirmation. So, ayan, welcome po sa bawat isa. And ayun, ako po yung natasang mag-speak for today in this seminar. So, Ayan, so let me just share my screen. Okay, let me reshare. Okay, so kita na po ba yung screen? Yes sir, kita po namin. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, thank you for having me po. Thank you for having me as a speaker in this seminar. So yung seminar po natin is entitled Cloud Computing and the Internet of Things. So in this topic, i-discuss po natin yung about sa cloud computing. So actually this topic is divided into two parts. First is the fundamentals of cloud of the cloud. So what is the cloud? What is the cloud? What is cloud computing? And um, some other principles about the cloud. And second part po is yung sa Internet of Things and how we can leverage the cloud to use the Internet of Things. Okay, so again, thank you for having me. And as you've already mentioned kanina, um, my name is Janelle Joseph Katapang, but you can call me JJ. And I'm a graduate of Bachelor of Science Computer Engineering, as mentioned earlier. And right now, I'm currently working as a software developer in Cognizant of Vision. So I specialize in back-end systems development and I also use the cloud in my everyday work or job. So specifically Microsoft Azure. So I'm also certified by Microsoft as a cloud from uh, the cloud fundamentals. And these are my other um, part-time job and my previous jobs. Okay, so I won't be diving too deep on that. So let's go straight to uh, the introduction to the cloud. But first, before that, let me just first take a poll. I want to, I actually made it an online poll just to understand my uh, audience. So uh, let me share a, a site. So lahat po nang nandito, please. Could you um, please na mag um, answer this quick poll? right now so i'll be sharing the link here so. ay na feedback po ba okay na po sir Dahil lang po pala dito sa ano ko sa YouTube na naka-live dito sa akin. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I sent a link there sa chat. So sa so mga participants po natin, can you kindly please answer? It's a poll lang po. So hindi ko malalaman kung sino-sino yung mga sumagot. But um, I just want to know yung level ng understanding ng audience regarding to the cloud. Yeah, so, may nagsasagot na po ba? Sir, nire-send ko po. Napasend po sa akin privately. Ay, private po ba yun? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, nire-send ko na lang po to everyone. Yeah. 
่ะโอเค so I see na la majority ng mga sagot is nasa gitna so some of you have le- heard about the cloud but not exactly sure kung ano ba siya so yeah so in this topic I hope na mas maintindihan po natin and mas maklarify natin kung ano yung cloud and what its uses what its uses and how we can use it in uh, in IoT in this particular seminar ano po okay So let me go back to my share screen. Yeah. Okay. So we na po bali yung uh, slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. So now let's go to the introduction to the cloud for part one of our seminar. Okay, so this topic na to, ito yung mga um, mga topics na itatakal natin for today. So first, why the cloud? Why why do we need it? Why is it important? And why is it widely used right nowadays? And number two is what is the cloud? So ano po ba yung cloud? And number three is what is cloud computing? And then different service models for cloud. Then different deployment models for the cloud. And different cloud providers. And then a quick demo on how we can actually use the cloud. Okay, so let's dive uh, straight to it. So before before we start, um, I just want to refresh everyone, everyone sa kantong server uh, model. So I think everyone is familiar with the client server model, tibuba. So if not, let me just quickly refresh it because this is an important um, fundamental with regards to the cloud and the internet in general. Ano po? Okay, so the client server model. Usually, your server, ato pong uh, server, this blue uh, thing right here. The server is in charge of giving information to the clients. So a server is nothing but a computer that serves information to other computers or devices. And these computers na nagamit sa server, they are called clients. Okay, and these clients access the server via the internet or via other network protocols. And the usual way is through the internet. And um, with that, so uh, just quick a quick example lang po kung how this works. Ano po? So usually like uh, mga nagaro dito ng Mobile Legends tipo ba? Or other gaming things or even sa websites, sa browsers. So for example, binuksan mo yung isang website sa uh, device na to sa 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 tablet fake say for example. So yung tablet, kinukuha niya yung information ng website doon sa server. So we are accessing the server via this via the internet. Okay? So is ang gagawin lang ng server is mag-serve. I-serve natin yung i-serve niya yung data ng particular website or application sa device na kumo-connect sa kanya. Okay. So this is an important aspect of the cloud because that's this is usually how it is uh it works and how it's established. Okay, now that we're clear with that. So and let's understand why cloud. Ano ba yung significance niya? Why do we need it? Why is it so important? So and why is everything else actually heading or gearing towards the cloud? The, uh, the cloud. So every company usually is going to the cloud now, especially in the pandemic. Everyone is work from home, and the industry is actually gearing on supporting the cloud and um, naga adjust for punta sa cloud because um, remote work is somehow um, gonna be very uh, widespread na in the next next years to come. Even if I think na matapos yung pandemic, ano po magiging practice na yung re- working remotely in a way kasi just to um, train each employees and everyone to be ready in case. Okay, so in cloud computing, suppose you want to deploy a website. So example, gusto natin mag-host ng website. Before the cloud computing, before natin gamitin, uh, before pa nag exist yung cloud computing, what you will mostly do in order to deploy a website is first you have to buy the servers 
Okay, so kailangan mo bumili ng mga servers, kailangan mo bumili ng assets ng mga at uh, uh, mga kailangan mo upang i-host yung website na yun. And usually servers are this um as I've said earlier, they're like computers na nagse-serve lang ng data. So kailangan mo ilagay yung website mo dun sa server na yun upang ma-access via the internet. So with this, hindi lang server kailangan mong gawin, di po ba? Ang kailangan mong bilhin. Kailangan mo rin ng ng room pag istoran ng server na server kailangan mo ng ng environment kailangan na kasi top lahat yon upang ma support yung server mo okay and next thing you need to do is to monitor and maintain the server now that you have the server na mabili ka na server and na uh, deploy mo dun yung website ang kailangan mong gawin is i monitor and maintain siya so with that kailangan you have to constantly check on your server to prevent any unwanted malfunctions or problems that might arise. So with that, pwede mo siyang monitor ang sarili mo constantly. So every now and then, titingnan mo kung ano nangyayari sa servers mo or you can hire a professional to do that. And next is more visitors, more servers. So kapag dadami yung traffic, yung term po dito sa kapag marami yung napunta sa website mo is traffic. So kapag maraming uh, visitors, Siyempre, kailangan mo nang mag-expand ng server. Pag kunwari, sobrang dami nang napunta sa website mo, hindi nakakayanin ng maliit mong server yung uh, sabay-sabay na napunta at nakuha ng resources sa server mo. So with that, kailangan mo bumili ng mas madaki pang servers. And with this, it means that kailangan mong upgrade yung iyong hardware. Either by buying more servers or by additional hardware to upgrade your setup. So, yan. So this is how it was before cloud computing, and this is usually how companies do it, especially kung uh, malaking company siya, wala mag-deploy ng or mag-host ng web application. Usually, kanto yung nagiging setup niya before the cloud, before the idea of the cloud. Okay, so with this setup, pagkita natin yung disadvantages. Unang una yung cost. Sure, dahil bibili ka ng servers at bibili ka ng uh, or say magre-rent ka ng room para store your servers or even mag-hire ka ng professional para mag-maintain ng server. So as you can see, yung cost pa lang, sobrang expensive. It's very, very expensive. Kaya usually mga big companies or mga big companies nga nag nagagawa ng gantong setup because they have the money to do so. And also the maintenance. Obviously, monitoring maintenance can be tedious, lalo na kung sarili mo lang, ang um, ikaw lang gagawa nun, walang mag-maintain na iba. Okay, so it's gonna be uh, very tedious to your to you, and yung idle time. Obviously, dahil maraming traffic or nagbabari yung traffic. Hindi naman laging madaming nap napunta sa ano mo di ba sa website. Minsan konti lang, minsan sobrang dami. So with that, and daming minsan kapag sobrang ang konti ng uh, ng visitors mo, nagiging idle yung server. And with this, minsan, pag idle yung server, binabayaran mo pa rin siya kahit hindi siya masyadong gamit. And same price lang siya ng kung paano mo siya gamitin ng, ng kunwari maraming, na, maraming visitors. Um, same price lang din siya kahit konti lang visitors. So hindi siya flexible in terms of um, the payment. Okay. And with that, makikita naman natin na uh, it's a uh, big having this the renting a server in the cloud is a big big plus para sa atin so sa so, hindi nakakaintindi ng meme na to kay Drake so wag na natin wag ta if you want we don't have to buy our servers actually better to rent servers in the cloud okay yan so now that we understand how why it's important and the advantages of the cloud now let's define what is the cloud now, simply put, the cloud is the internet. So the term cloud actually refers to the internet. But more specifically, it's all the things you can access remotely over the internet. So when I say that something is in the cloud, it means it's stored on the internet servers instead of your computer's hard drive. And when you access that, you want to access these particular files that's stored in the cloud, you're actually downloading from that server instead of getting it from your um, particular device. Ano po? So this is the quick 
in, and simple is the um, definition of the cloud. And kung makikita natin itong sa picture na to, this picture of the cloud na may nakaupong tao dito sa taas, top right. And makikita natin sa loob ng cloud, nandun yung mga stack of servers, different servers. So in this picture, these are actually, this, act, this is actually a clear depiction of what the cloud might look or looks like because dito sa cloud, um, we know na may servers na naka-deploy somewhere and we know na nagamit tayo ng servers um, kapag nagamit tayo ng cloud. Ang only difference dito is hindi natin alam exactly kung nasaan yung server. We just know na meron siya, it exists, but we don't know its physical location at hindi natin alam kung uh, exact location niya kung nasaan. Okay? So with that, um, I hope na um, the definition of the cloud is clear to everyone. So pwede kayo mag-question um, if you want anytime. So mag-comment lang muna siguro or mag-speak up na lang. Okay, so moving forward, what is cloud computing? Now that we understand the definition of the cloud, and we way on cloud computing? So simply put, again, cloud computing is the delivery of the computing services, including servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, and intelligence over the cloud or the internet or the cloud on a pay-as-you-go basis to offer faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale. So this is an, a, a definition of the cloud com, of cloud computing from Microsoft actually. And sabi nga dito na it's basically like um, getting um, particular solutions or functionalities for a, a server or a computer pero wala sa iyo yung computer. Nasa nasa cloud yung computer na pinagkukuhanan mo or pinaggagamitan mo and yung ginagamit mo. And sabi dito, it's a pay-as-you-go basis. So what it means by pay-as-you-go is it's like parang payment siya ng electricity bill or water bills natin. Um, kapag ang electricity, bill, electricity mo is gamit na gamit, pag sobrang gamit mo ng kuryente or kapag sobrang dami mong gamit ng uh, tubig, nataas din yung yung bill mo ng kuryente, di po ba? At yung tubig. So kapag kaunti lang yung gamit mo, mas mababa lang din yung um, binabayaran mo. And with this concept, it's the, uh, actually the cloud is using this concept para mas um, efficient or flexible yung payment ng bawat customers na nagamit ng cloud. So what it means, na gaya ko sa Nina, di ba, sa um, disadvantage na sinabi ko kanina, kapag hindi nata hindi tayo gagamit ng cloud um, cloud even before the cloud is kapag idle time yung cost ng binabayaran mo is the same as kapag ma kahit madaming users so hindi siya flexible but with the cloud we are actually offer uh, they are actually offering services na pay as you go so kapag idle kunyari idle yung uh, um, website mo, konti yung visitors, it means na konti lang din ang babayaran mo sa, sa compute, sa, sa service nila. And kung marami naman, mag auto scale siya and depending do sa mga maraming gumamit and how much compute has been used, then that will, um, then the payment will adjust accordingly. So mas mahal din yung bayad. So this is a, uh, this is the definition of the computing service and I hope na clear din ulit. Okay, again, so these are additional examples on about cloud computing. So for example, in, take this scenario or illustration here. Sabi dito na instead of managing files on the local storage device, cloud computing makes it possible to store them over the internet. So if you see this illustration, you know, hindi, na natin, hindi natin kailangan mag-save or with the cloud, we, it is possible na yung mga files and documents and videos and all that stuff can be saved not in the hard drive, but it can be stored in the cloud. Okay, so one example nito is Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox if nakagamit na kayo sa phone nyo. And kung may mga um, um, Xiaomi backup system kayo, something like that, is that's how actually it works. It stores your um, files or 
or device information or device files actually into the cloud para kapag magbabackup ka kunwari or mag reformat ng phone or ng device is nandun pa rin yung device, nandun pa rin yung files mo. Naka-save sila sa sa cloud and madali mo siyang mababalik kasi nasa cloud na naman siya. So, release siyang may da-download. So, with this, I'm not saying na storing to the cloud is the best is the best way to do um, saving of files or documents. So, may particular advantage pa rin naman kapag nagsisave sa hard disk drive. Ano po? So, for example, um, uh, mag-save ka ng malalaking files and gusto mo lang siyang i-save sa privately sa hard disk drive mo. That's a good way to save them. Um, pero yung advantage din naman kasi ng cloud, for example, you can access these files anywhere and everywhere as long as may internet. So kung pag kunwari naiwan mo yung USB mo pero papasok ka na sa school, so kailangan mo pa bumalik para kunin yung files. Di po ba? So that's one advantage of storing it in the cloud. But again, it's a case-to-case -case basis. One has more advantage than the other and vice versa. So depende yan sa kung paano mo siya gagamitin at kung paano mo siya ileleverage. But again, that's just one example of what cloud computing can do. Okay. Moving forward, let's go to the cloud service models. So in what ways can we actually use or leverage the cloud? There are actually three service models that we can do in order to use or we can use in order to leverage the cloud. So these three are um, IAS, PAAS, and SAAS. Usually they are read as IAS, PAAS, and SAAS. Okay. So each, each one stands for infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, respectively. Okay, and what it does is, I mean, um, for infrastructure as a service, let's define them. IAS contains the basic building blocks for cloud IT, and typically it provides access to networking features, computers, virtual or dedicated hardware, and data storage space. So, it's, so in the infrastructure as a service, you are actually renting the infrastructure of the of that cloud provider. So for example, you want a virtual machine. That is an example of a infrastructure as a service. Okay. Now for platform as a service, it removes the need to manage the underlying infrastructure and usually the hardware and operating systems and allow you to focus on the deployment and management of your application. So mas nakapokus to dun sa paggamit sa cloud provider and more of its services and not the infrastructure, meaning to say 90 in this particular scenario or particular service model is hindi mo kailangan ng um, mag-deploy ng virtual machines, ng network or computers, etc. So walang hardware na uh, i-configure in a way. And then software as a service or SaaS. And this one provides a completed product that is run and managed by the service provider. Okay, so to better understand these ideas, meron tayong model dito, comparison on how it actually looks and how it's, and how it, uh, kung ano yung mga magagamit natin. I mean, kung ano yung manage natin and manage ng provider. Okay, so dito sa chart na to, or sa table whatsoever, is yung blue is are the things na kailangan mong i-configure or i-manage. So ikaw yung mag-e-effort kapag blue. Kapag green naman, ang mag-e-effort yung provider. So ibig sabihin, hindi natin kailangan gawin yung mga green. Okay? And from left to right, kita naman natin na as we go to the right, is mas naunti yung kailangan natin i-manage. Mas naunti yung effort na kailangan natin i-configure para lang magamit yung cloud or yung service nila. So in this example, um, let me just quickly run through this, but hindi ko siya isa-isahin itong mga itong terms. Um, so sa on-premises, what, what it means to be, uh, what it means na yung term on-premises is yung gaya ng example ko kanina na hindi gagamit ng cloud. So sa on-premise, premise, hindi nagamit ng cloud. Uh, Lahat-lahat ng, ng to, for example, ay kailangang i-manage mo from the hardwares to the storage, networking, 
yung servers, OS, application, yan, lahat ng yan kailangan mong i-manage. So, yun yung gaya yung example ko kanina na kailangan mong bumili ng server, kailangan mong manage kailangan mong i-deploy na yung website doon. Okay? Then, infrastructure as a service, the next level here. So, mas umunti yung kailangan nating efforts na kailangan i-manage. Ito na lang part na to. And as you can see, the servers, the storage, the networking, and even virtualization is ang nagpo, ang nag effort na diyan or ang bahala diyan is yung provider, yung cloud provider. And with that, ang kailangan na lang natin is yung OS, yung ano natin yung um yung machine kung ano yung gusto nating OS, kung Linux or Windows, etc. And yung mga hardwares, hindi na tayo na hindi na natin kailangan bumili ng hardwares. What we need just to, need to do is rent the hardwares. So, ayun. This is, the hardwares are provided by the man, by the cloud provider. And in PaaS, platform as a service, um mas munti palalo yung kailangan nating i-manage and in this service model, ang application at data na lang ang kailangan nating um i-manage. So, yung lahat-lahat ng to, yung runtime, middleware, OS, hindi na natin kailangang problemahin. Ang problema na niyan is yung cloud provider. And then, yung software as a service or SaaS is lahat-lahat na to ay um, is ma managed na ng cloud provider. So, yeah. So, this is the model for or the cloud service model. And um, to further give um clarify this particular model naggawa nag, 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 po ako ng konting comparison sa real real life or other activities apart from technical technical terms okay so for example mag, sa pagluluto pa lang kung may gusto mong magluto ng adobo kakain ka ng adobo so these are some uh, comparison so for example kapag sa pagluluto ng adobo iko kung iko compare natin yan sa on premise or without the cloud ganito yung magiging scenario niya so una, syempre, kailangan mong prepare yung kitchen and then kailangan mo ring prepare yung mga cooking materials tapos kailangan mong bumili, bilhin yung mga ingredients and then prepare ingredients, cook ingredients, prepare tables, chairs, prepare plates tapos saka mo kakainin ng adobo. So kung makikita natin dito, ito yung uh, ikaw yung mag-effort ng lahat. Ikaw yung bibili ng lahat, ikaw yung magluluto, ikaw yung prepare. So lahat-lahat kailangan mong gawin para lang makakain ng adobo. Okay, so that's the thing without a cloud or on-premise. The next one, yung IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service. So dito naman, ayan, kaya ni Selena Gomez, yung sa mga napanood niya akin yung um, pagluluto ng adobo. So ang isang i-cross out natin yung mga things na hindi na, tayo, hindi na natin kailangan i-manage. So sa IaaS, IAAS, hindi na natin kailangan i-manage yung kitchen and cooking materials kasi um, kunwari, nakiluto na lang tayo kung, kung for example ano ang kailangan na nating i-manage is yung ingredients um, magluto at syempre yung mga tables plates utensils so, saka natin kakainin ng adobo so nabuhasan yung ating effort ang, ang kailangan na lang nating gawin is magluto hindi na natin kailangan ng kitchen or at least hindi natin kailangan i-prepare next yung platform as a service so, platform as a service naman ito yung you can um like in this sa pagkain ng dine-in. So for example, gusto mo magadobo pero tiyatamad ka, ayaw mo magluto. So magda-dine-in ka na lang, lalabas ka na lang. Tapos doon mo kakainin. So for this example, alam mo ma ito yung mga things na hindi natin gagawin, obviously. Hindi na natin kailangan ng kitchen, materials, ingredients. Ah, so hindi na natin, hindi natin kailangan magluto. Kasi sila na yung magluluto doon. Kailangan na lang natin is prepare tables and chairs and plates and utensils. Um, by this term, what I mean is kaila, ikaw na yung maghahanap lang ng, ng upuan mo. Ikaw maghahanap ng uh, plates. So, ganun, in this particular scenario, na yung plates, ikaw yung mag- at utensils, ikaw yung kukuha. And then, the last one is software as a service. And ito na yung pinakang tamad na scenario na ano po. So, hindi mo na, ayaw mo nang lumabas sa bahay mo. Ang gusto mo na lang is mag-food panda, magpa-deliver ka na lang. So lahat-lahat ng yan, ang kitchen, materials, ingredients, 
pagluluto, pati yung tables and chairs sa utensils, hindi na natin kailangang problemahin. Ang kailangan na lang natin gawin is kainin yung adobo kasi dineliver na. Tapos minsan may uh, nakalagay pa yun sa, yun sa puting tawag ba doon? Karton? <laughs> yung plate, plus karton plate. Tapos may mga utensils na plastic na mabalis mabali. So, ayun. So, hindi na natin kailangang problemahin yun. Ang kailangan na lang natin is kainin. Okay? So, I hope na mas na-clarify po yung para saan yung service models na to and how we can use the cloud with this. So, meron pa ako isang pang example dito. Na, ito naman technical na. So, sa, pag, sa example naman ito is same nang sa uh, example ko kanina sa in, about sa pag-deploy ng website. So, on the on-premise, without the cloud. Kaya nang sabi ko kanina, kailangan mag-prepare ng server room. Kailangan bumili ng servers. Kailangan may configure yung servers. Kailangan mo mag-design at develop ng website at saka mo ide-deploy yung website sa server. Okay. So lahat ng yan, kailangan manage mo. Sa infrastructure as a service, din natin kailangan mag-set up ng hardware so or infrastructure. Lahat yon is manage na ng cloud providers. Ang kailangan na lang natin i-manage is yung server, yung server information. Meaning kung ano yung gusto nating OS, ano yung gusto nating um, connectivity, network, security, and all that. So, ayun, ay configure na lang natin via their cloud provider platform. And yung hardwares, yung mga servers, physical servers, hindi na natin kailangang problemahin. Alam na lang natin na makikigamit tayo or nagre-rent tayo ng hardwares. And then, of course, dito mo kailangan design and develop yung website. And ikaw pa rin yung nagde-deploy web ng website to the server. Okay. The next one. Platform as a service. Now, in this particular um, service model, uh, yung pag-prepare ng server, buy ng server, even pag-configure ng OS, hindi na natin kailang problemahin yung sa platform kasi sila na yung bahala doon. Ang kailangan na lang natin uh, mag-worry na lang tayo is sa website, mag-code ng website at yung mag-deploy ng website sa server nila. So, kung anong mang OS yun, kung anong mang security, um, minsan may configure din natin, pero mostly, yung cloud provider na yung um, bahala na mag, mag de, um, bahala na doon. Ang kailangan lang natin is mag-deploy ng website or deploy yung website sa kanila kapag natapos. And then, sa us or software as a service, ito na yung wala ka nang kailangan configure kasi parang finished product na siya ang uh, kailangan mo lang is provide sa kanila kung ano yung gusto mo makita sa website, ano yung, for example, na ano yung mga content na gusto mo makita sa homepage, sa contact page, sa about page. So, one example nito is WordPress in a way. Parang ng konti. Kasi in, sa WordPress, hindi mo, na kaila, hindi mo masyado kailangan ng technical know-how doon. Um, minsan, drag and drop lang siya. Eh. So, so pag, pag develop ng website, um, yun, parang pinapadali niya yung Lahat-lahat ng effort na yun. So, minsan sila rin bahala sa pag-deploy ng website. Uh, yeah. So, these are the comparisons and I hope na nas na-clarify nga po yung uh, tool ko sila sabi na I hope na naka-clarify. So, ayun po. And one option is actually not necessarily better than the other. So, depende pa rin yan kung ano yung gusto mong uh, anong services yung kailangan mo, kung anong kailangan mong mga functionality. So, it's a case-to-case -case basis pa rin. Um, for example, na kunwari, ikaw ang company and nag-hire ka ng, ng web developers. Siyempre, kapag nag-hire ka ng web developers, you're expecting them to develop websites, mag-code. Mag Ito ba? So, in that particular scenario, hindi mo pipiliin yung software as a service as yung cloud as hindi mo pipiliin yung uh, cloud model na service as software as a service or sa as bakit kasi kailangan pa sila ay sila yung pagde-develop ng website di ba so sila, sila rin yung pagde-deploy mo ng website since you hired them to do so sayang naman kung babayaran mo sila tapos hindi naman sila mag-code di po ba so in this in that particular scenario um mas magi-incline ka sa platform you platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Ano po? So um depende na lang kung whichever sa dalawang to is yung magiging option mo. Pero 
ayun po. Again, not one is better than the other. It still depends on the use case ng uh, paggagawan mga gagawin mo. Okay? All right. With that, let's move on sa cloud deployments. So paano ba i-deploy yung cloud para magamit natin? So these, there are actually three models for cloud deployments. First one is being public cloud, the second is private cloud, and the third is hybrid cloud. So sa public cloud, the um ano, ang cloud is available to the general public and data are created and stored on third party servers. So these cloud public cloud um mga example niyan is yung mga enterprise cloud providers such as Amazon Web Services, Azure, Microsoft Azure Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, Alibaba Cloud, and so on and so forth. So that's the public cloud. It means that it's publicly available sa lahat. And private cloud naman is it's only specific to a company that, that owns this particular cloud. So medyo secure naman siya, uh, limited only to a particular company. So yung mga makagamit lang ng cloud is yung mga ina-allow ng um, owner ng private cloud. And then the next one is hybrid cloud. So it's a combination of both the public and the private as the name states because it's hybrid. Okay, so again, meron akong konting uh, example dito, comparison dito sa, sa real life. And let's liken them to transportation or sa vehicles naman. So in this particular example, for example, sa public cloud, we can liken that to a bus. So sa bus, siyempre commute yan, anyone can ride. Kahit sino may access sa bus, pwede yung... Uh, walang tinatangi ang bus ata. Ano po. So, yeah, lahat po yan, um, audience and customers, anyone can ride. And sa private naman, private cloud, it's um, similar to your privately owned car. So, yung may sarili kang kotse yung binili. And, and you can see here na only you and who you choose can ride. So, dito, yung mga particular set of customers lang or sino mang gusto mo lang ang mag-ride sa sasakyan is yun lang yung allowed. And then yung hybrid. Sa hybrid naman, itong example natin sa taxi, ano, for example is dito is ikaw yung may-ari ng taxi. You own the taxi but in, in other times, it's also available sa lahat. Anyone can also ride. So in a way, available siya sa'yo pero available din siya sa marami sa public. Okay. So that's a hybrid and you kung mapapansin niyo, ginawa ko siyang yellow kasi it's a combination of the public and the private of the red and the green cars. Oh. <laughs> Yan. So quick review lang. Okay. Now that we understand those cloud terms, muna naman tayo sa mga cloud providers. Kung saan ba kalino ba tayo lalapit? kung kailangan natin ng cloud services, functionalities, and all that. So actually, in the market, there are three that dominates these cloud providers. One is Amazon Web Services. Another is Microsoft Azure. And one is, another is Google Cloud Platform. There's actually plenty, plenty more. But these three are usually uh, the one that's being used, lalo na mga startup, mga gustong gumamit lang ng cloud or gusto ma-familiarize ang cloud, usually ito yung tatlo yung nilalawitan nila. Okay. So, sa mga cloud providers ito, bigyan lang ako ng mga konting customers na nagamit ng Amazon Web Services, ng cloud providers na to. So, dito sa Amazon Web Services, so kulala naman natin si Jeff Bezos, yung pinakamayaman sa ngayon. Or, di ko lang kung siya pa rin o si Elon Musk na. Pero, he was one of the richest. Si Jeff Bezos, the Amazon is Amazon CEO. So actually most of that uh, fortune was attributed to AWS kasi madami silang customers worldwide sa cloud. Okay, and one of their customers or their customers actually is Netflix. Netflix, eh, alam naman natin is uh, video streaming service and um, yan. So kita naman natin yung library nila ng videos, movies and images and everything is lahat yun sobrang dami di po ba so kailangan nila ng magandang infrastructure and um, 
um, cloud upang mas ma ma deliver yo sa customers in a fast and flexible way. So actually they are using Amazon for that Amazon web services. So yan. And another one is Twitch. So sa mga nag stream diyan or alam mang uh, mga streamers. So Twitch is a social media and streaming platform. I'm not sure if it's social media na, pero usually it's a streaming platform and yeah. And they're using Amazon Web Service according to their or according to AWS information. And another one is ESPN. So yung malat ng mga online um, applications sila and all that is gamit nila is AWS. Okay. So the next one. So Microsoft Azure naman. Merong uh, itong mga sample na to na gamit naman na nila is Azure. So one example is eBay which is an e-commerce website. And Another one is Samsung, so they use Azure for their cloud um, information or functionalities. And Boeing, <coughs> excuse me, Boeing, if I pronounce that right, which is an airline company. So a lot of airline tracking or airline information nila is using Microsoft Azure. Next is Google Cloud Platform or GCP. Now, mga customers nila is itong I know na some of you already know this probably uh, probably so Coca-Cola so one of their customers is Coca-Cola and uh, they use GCP for their online and web applications and and infrastructures and Spotify yan sa mga audio file diyan so Spotify uses Google Cloud platform to store their music music libraries files, all that. And then Snapchat. So Snapchat is yung nauna sa stories. Trivia lang. So bago pa yung Instagram saka Facebook My Day. Uh, Snapchat yung una nagpauso niyan. So they're using Google Cloud Platform. And these are just some of the examples of, of the cloud providers. There are actually many and plenty more. And as you can see here in this particular chart, uh, Amazon ta ang nangunguna in the fourth quarter of 2020, followed by Microsoft Azure, and then Google Cloud, and then Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud, Salesforce, Tencent, and then Oracle. Yeah, so they, these are some of the information lang. And ito pa po yung other cloud market or cloud providers na available sa market. So sobrang dami nila. And depende na lang sa inyong use case kung ano yung gagamitin nyo. Okay, so hindi ko na siya isa-isain. I'm just showing na sobrang dami nila. And you can actually uh, just choose whichever is needed. So depende na lang sa inyong use case nga po. Okay. Now that we understand these cloud concepts and the cloud providers, what is... Uh, what are the uses of cloud computing? So these are some of the uses lang. And the, um, there are actually plenty, plenty uses of cloud computing, but for the benefit of the time, let's just go through some. So actually, um, you're actually probably using cloud computing right now. So hindi lang natin napapansin, hindi lang natin nare-realize. Kung tayo nag, uh, if we are using an online service to send an email, for example, or edit documents such as um, how we edit documents in Google, in Google Word, in Google Write or something, or watch movies or TV or listen to music, play games or store pictures and other files. It's likely that cloud computing is working behind the scenes and it's making it possible because of cloud computing. So sa ating everyday uh, na ginagawa, even sa ating pag email or even sa ngayon, sa ating online webinar na to, Actually, this is a good example of cloud computing. Behind the scenes, um, cloud computing is working its magic upang tayo uh, makapag-usap dito ng live and real time. Okay, so that is a cloud computing. And here are some of the uses of that. First one is streaming audio and video. So connect with your audience anytime, anywhere, and device with high definition audio. So alam naman natin mga examples niyan, Netflix, um, Disney Plus, um, Spotify, and many more. 
Next is storing, backup, and recovering of data. So in here, you need to protect your data most cost-efficiently and at massive scale. And by transferring your data over the internet to an offsite cloud storage system that's accessible from any location and any device. So one example nyan is nga, Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and other backups or storage cloud um, provider. Then an data analysis or analyzing data. It unifies data across teams, divisions, and lo locations in the cloud. And next is creating cloud native applications. So we can quickly build, deploy, and scale applications, web, mobile, and API. Okay, so now that we understand how we can, how the cloud is used, let's um, proceed with a quick demo on how we can actually leverage the cloud. So in this demo, um, gagawin natin yung scenario kanina. So we want to deploy a website. So what we need to do, is spawn a virtual machine to host our website. Next is to design and develop our website, which is just a quick website. And then we need to deploy our website to the virtual machine. And of course, we need to view our website from an internet browser. Yeah, so before I dive to the demo, may mga um, questions po ba if, uh, or clarifications na, na, na is ang iba or ang people in this part or about participant? Yeah, next stop muna ako na share kasi magsi-share ako ng ibang screen. Okay, so since wala namang mga questions so nakikita dito, let me proceed with the demo. Let me just reshare. Sir, pwede mo magtanong? Okay. Okay pa. Uh, sir, uh, student tapos work, nag-work din po ako ngayon sa City Hall and uh -huh. nasa IT department po ako and yun kasing ano namin, backup ng mga date ng aming mga in, sinesave lang namin sa Google Drive kasi wala namin, hindi pa kami, hindi namin kayang bumili ng, ng cloud backup. Okay. So, pero yung uh, Google Drive na ginagamit namin ay binili namin yung space so kaya mas malaki na siyang nasa save namin. Ano kaya sir ang pwede yung ma-recommend sa amin na, na cloud para may backup namin yung aming mga servers? So lahat ba yun ng servers or as it lahat ng servers sa City Hall ng files? Ganun. Pwede naman si uh, sir bali ano lang yung mga income generating lang at saka yung siguro yung HR ano uh, mga system. records ganun. Oh yes yes sir. Okay. So for that particular scenario um actually okay na rin siya sa Google Drive kasi Google Drive naman is uh, trusted as secured and tested na siya. So madami naman siyang uh, testing na nangyari and all. Kaya siya na deploy as a storage and backup um, application. Pero, and also naman, kung nagbabackup din kayo ng mga sensitive data, like billing or things like that, okay na rin yung sa Google Drive. So, kung gusto nyo pang mas i-backup, another option sa pag-backup is, um, well, may actually may service yung mga cloud providers na like Azure or AWS or GCP para sa pag backup ng files and sa, mula sa server pa po yun. So, um, mararecommend ka lang is for now, okay na rin yung Google Drive kung, and since binili nyo rin, binili, binili nyo na rin naman siya para sa mga additional features, then I think that's a good option na rin naman. So, kung kuhanap lang kayo ng second option is sa, um, search na lang po kayo, search na lang tayo sa mga cloud providers, pili tayo ng cloud provider, kung nari AWS or Azure, or GCP, or yung mga nabanggit ko kanina, tapos search, um, gamitin natin yung backup and backup uh, service nila. So lahat sila may backup um, storage. Eh. Like, sa, like sa AWS, meron silang Glacier or um, yung other app ng pag-backup. Ano po? So, ayun po. And sir, bali kasi ano, um, talagang 
ang pinaka-question ko talaga ay paano namin ma-secure yung na hindi mawawala yung date yung data namin or yung credibility nung nung provider ng ano ng cloud kasi ito po yung scenario kagaya nung nangyari kay Friendster at saka kay kay ano kay Friendster na lang di ba parang same lang as na-deactivate oh, na deactivate siya bigla so nawala na yung mga sinib mo or kay Yahoo na bigla rin ano yung mga emails ko dun sa dati kong Yahoo account eh nawala na so yun po yung aming kailang kailang kung sige yun lang po ang tanong ko okay so yung parang security nga po na yes, na sir. yung trustworthy no be trustworthy ba yung ginamit yung um information or provider ako okay. um actually um ba, paano ba to well kung gaga ang kung gamit yung kasi Google Drive um we all know naman na Google is a uh, very big right now and kilala siya and all so in terms of credibility the, um i think yung pipili natin is yung nasa top ngayon ng cloud so kita naman natin kanina dun sa sa graph na pinakita ko kanina na nung ano nanguna sa cloud is AWS and um Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform ano po so with that we are quite confident kasi kapag um, nasira sila or na-deactivate sila gaya nga ng Yahoo or ng uh, Friendster then maraming customers ang ma- ang ma- maapek maapektuhan ano po so gaya naman ni Friendster for kung i-compare natin siya sa friends kay Friendster is hindi naman po siya uh, hindi naman ginagamit siya ng ibang customers or uh, other companies upang for example mag-save ng device or mag-save ng information, mag-backup or any other items. So siya ay social media platform naman po. So it's not actively being used by other customers or other companies kaya in a way um we are we can entrust na yung mga cloud providers nga po and even Google nga po is ang uh, hindi siya mabasa-basa lang mawawala sa market ano po pero kung gusto nga po na hindi entr- hindi kayo um, hindi kayo re- reliant or naka-rely sa cloud provider or any other company pwede naman kayong mag ayun nga yung kaya ko sabi ko din mag on prem yung kayong bispo do sa city hall mismo bumili kayo ng server tapos yung server niyo is in charge lang ng pagba-backup. So doon kayo magba-backup ng mga files na yon. Ang kailangan niyo nga lang is kailangan i-ensure niyo yung maintenance at yung health ng server na yon. Kasi pag na-down yung server na yon at nasira yung server na yon or na-corrupt, then mawawala na din yung um, yung mga data natin. So ayun po, that's one I guess that's one advantage and disadvantage of an on-prem setup. Ano po? Pero kung gagamit tayo ng cloud naman, we can entrust din dun sa top 3 na yon na yung data natin is safe. Kasi meron din silang tinatawag na SLA or Service Level Agreement wherein meron kayong parang contract or trust na yung data na binigay nyo sa kanila or yung interest sa kanila is hindi siya mawala. Ayun po. Thank you po, sir. Uh, Malina mo naman po, sir. Okay po. Thank you. Sana ay nakatulong yung sagot. <laughs> Okay po. So may other questions pa po ba? If not, let me proceed sa pag-demo ko po. So Sir, excuse sir, may nag-message may question pala. Oo nga. And from Lawrence Kyle. Um ano yung cloud hosting? Ang cloud hosting is yung mag-host ka ng ng website or web application mo sa cloud. So, ito yung isang example ng uh, platform as a service. Kasi sa cloud hosting, um, in, ang in-host mo is yung, web, yung website, ide-deploy mo sa kanila without the use of creating a machine or a server. 
So, hindi na natin kailangan ng infrastructure. So, ang gagawin na lang natin is yung website, di ba, nag-code tayo, nag-develop tayo ng website or ng web application. So, nais natin, uh, wag, wag, hindi tayo ma-hassle. So, pag ayaw natin ng hassle na mag-set up pa tayo ng web, ng infrastructure or other um, or networking um, in security or information, then we can use um, we can use nga po yung platform as a service uh, which is uh, one example nun is yung cloud hosting. Ayun po. Naalimanagan po ba? Okay. Okay, so para mas malinaw yung ano, yung regarding that. Dito sa demo kasi, yun yung gagawin natin. Mag ano tayo? Mag de-deploy tayo ng website. So, kita na po ba yung screen sa portal? Azure portal? Yes, sir. Okay. So, gagawin po natin example is mag deploy tayo ng website, right? So, sa step-by-step step natin kanina, first, kailangan mag-spawn tayo ng virtual machine to host our website. So, virtual machine is, you can imagine it na parang computer, pero yung hardware or yung parang mag-build ng PC, pero yung PC, hindi wala sa'yo. Wala yung physical components. So, what I mean by that is dito, so sa particular example dito, gagamit tayo tin is Microsoft Azure kasi ito lang yung pinurvide na may libreng credit. Pero you can use AWS as well or Google Cloud Platform. Lahat sila merong free subscription. Ano po? So for this particular example, gamitin lang natin is Azure. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna deploy a virtual machine. Now, virtual machine nga po, yung sabi ko nga, is a computer lang po na wala sa atin. Ang computer or server is deployed in the cloud. Okay? So in this particular example, pipili lang ito yung mga i-configure mo lang. So as I said kanina, kailangan mo lang i-configure yung mga yung mga to. So wag na hindi na natin kailangang alamin muna yung specific nito, but ito lang yung mga importante. So yung virtual machine name, kung ano yung name mo. It's for example, make this demo machine 002. Or meron na ba 002? 003, meron na pala. And then, pipili tayo ng region kung saan server natin siya lalagay. So, in this in this scenario, sa Southeast Asia tayo. Kasi kung sa North Europe, for example, sa ibang um, ibang location, then magkakaroon tayo ng latency issue. So, yung latency issue is yung maglalag or may konting lag kasi sobrang layo ng server. Kaya Southeast Asia lang tayo ang ano, region. Kasi itong mga to, pwede natin hindi siya pakilaman for now. Tapos dito, yung image. So kanina, kailangan natin yung configure yung OS gabi dun sa IAAS. So dito, configure natin yung OS. Pwede natin pumili yung Ubuntu, Red Hat, and mga OS na yan. Pero in this scenario, I'll just use Windows. Okay. 2019. And ngayon, pipili tayo ng size. Ito yung size ng CPU at memory. So lahat yan, merong kakibat na prices. So, depende sa use case mo, kailangan mong alamin kung ano yung pinaka-cost effective mo. Pero, ang maganda naman dito is, ano siya, as I've said, flexible in a way. Kasi, nag, kapag idle time, nag-auto-shutdown siya. Nag-auto-shutdown and, sorry. Auto-shutdown and dun mas makakasave ka ng cost. So, in this particular Example, kunin na lang natin itong general purpose. So, meron siyang dalawang CPU, dalawang core, and 4 gig RAM, data disk of 4, and IOPS, temporary storage of 8 gig premium disk. Okay? So, let's select that. Then, maglagay lang tayo ng mga credentials para ma-access natin. So, bahala ka na doon. And then, ngayon, mag allow tayo ng port. What it means is inbound port rules. Kung paano natin ma-access yung or what port in the network natin siya ma-access. So, dito as example, lalagay natin HTTP 80 kasi port 80. And then, 
for remote remote desktop usage kailangan or remote um, window yung 4389 so select natin yan once done next tayo speedy tayo kung ano yung OS natin so pag premium medyo mahal kaya doon lang tayo sa standard and okay na yan let's leave it as a default then muna tayo sa networking and pipili tayo ng network so pwede kayong kumili na ito yung mga nagawa ko pero yung scenario kulagay na lang tayo ng bago pwede tayo ng bago okay Then, dito, hindi na natin kailangan muna sa ngayon. Huwag natin muna i-configure. Okay. So, let's leave that for now. And then, sa management, um, mag-set lang tayo ng, for example, auto-shutdown. Kung gusto natin mag-shutdown ng particular time, pwede natin gawin yon And then, advance... Um, let's leave it as it is. So then, and then, we review na lang natin as create na natin pagkata, pagkatapos. Okay, so ito yung makikita natin yung details ng product natin i-deploy. So ito yung ating pricing, 0.5 USD per hour based on sa ating pinili. Okay, so once done, let's just create it. So, ang ginawa lang natin is nag-configure tayo ng virtual machine. Meaning to say, nag-gawa lang tayo ng uh, nag-deploy tayo ng parang PC na ma-access natin over the network. So, hindi na natin hindi tayo bumili ng server as I've said earlier. Kasi, kung on-prem tayo, what we do, what we should do is bumili nga po na ng server. Pero dito, yung mga hardware, hindi na natin um, hindi na natin um, nag- Um, kinonfigure or hindi na tayo nag-worry sa mga hardware setup. Lahat ng yon is provided na ni ng cloud provider na to. Pacific cloud provider. Okay. So, let's just wait na ma-deploy. And there. The deployment was completed. And now na meron na tayong virtual machine, we can then connect to it via RDP. Okay, so RDP, co -connect, what we mean here is we're just gonna uh, remotely connect to that server kasi since wala nga natin yung physical hardware, physical um, server, ma-access lang natin siya through the internet or through the network. So kanina, sinet ko yung port 3389 as public or accessible. So now we're gonna connect to it and magagamit tayo ng yung credential na ginamit natin kanina. There. So, kita po ba yung ano? Um, remote desktop. Yeah, so, ina-access na natin yung server na dineploy natin. And wala. Meron na tayong PC sa ating PC. Parang ganun. Right. Now, ngayon, meron na tayong server. And, um, kailan, ayun, ang next step natin is mag-develop ng website para i-deploy sa server na to. And how we can do that is... Aba naghihintay, nagko-configure pa siya ng itong mga local servers and and features. Yan. So, para ma-host natin yung ating website via this server, we're gonna use IIS or information, internet information something. Yan. So, next. Mag-next-next na lang tayo. Let's leave the default. Let's trust na safe yung default. Pero dito sa server roles, 
um, kailangan natin is web server IIS. Kailangan natin yung feature na yan. Kasi yung deploy tayo sa IIS. Okay, so... Okay, so install natin yung mga configuration na yan. And habang naghihintay tayo, um, ay, share screen. So while we're waiting na pagda-download na, um, balik tayo dun sa virtual machine. And makikita natin meron tayong public IP address. And kung access natin yung public IP address na yan, wala pa yun sa ngayon kasi nagko-configure pa yung IIS. But later, we will see na available sa atin yung, or yung server na yun is available over the internet. So let's just wait for this to finish. So haba naghihintay, maybe you can, may mga mga questions na pwede pa akong sagutin. or not. So, tapos na pala. Okay. Yan. So, tapos na mag-install ng IIS. And if we go back to the IP address na nasa public, we can see na ito yung IIS default or default website or default na HTML. Okay. So, isa-send ko dun sa chat para lang makita uh, nyo yung yung IP. Pwede nyo yung i-try sa browser nyo if you are in the browser. Okay. Yan. So, um, yan. Okay. So, magde-deploy na tayo ng website natin. Now, in order to do that, punta tayo sa Tools and IIS Manager. And nakita natin kanina yung website ng IIS, di ba ba? Ito yung default website niya. And if we will go to uh, explore, ang gagawa lang niya is kinukuha niya yung .html, .html file na na, na doon sa www root ng um, site na yon. So in this example, dito siya sa IIS start .html. So gagawin natin, magagawa tayo ng website natin. So madalis na website lang. For example, demo site or mamaya pala muna. So, para magawa tayo ng uh, sarili nating website, syempre, gawa muna tayo ng um, folder ng paglalagyan natin ng HTML file. So, dito, maglagay tayo ng new folder. Example, demo app or demo site. Tapos, lagay natin ng www root para standard. Then, magawa tayo ng new file next text document. So, saan mo lagay natin dito yung demo site.html. Okay. So, i-edit natin siya in notepad. So, ngayon, example website lang siya. So, uh, imagine natin na nag-code nag tayo sa sa ating um, sariling laptop or device. Tapos, gusto na lang natin. Ang gagawin lang natin pag na-deploy na or kapag natapos mo na yung site, ikakopy mo na lang siya dito sa dineploy mong server. And dito, magawa tayo, lagay tayo na hello world I am J. Yan. Save natin siya. And of course, kita natin ang type niya is text document pa din. So, kailangan natin paguhin yung yung extension. There. Now, meron na tayong HTML document. Ngayon, mag-add na tayo ng bagong website naman, which is yung demo site. And sa-select natin lang yung physical path na nilagay natin, kung saan man siya. Okay. With that, uh, mag-assign din natin tayo ng port. So kanina, ginawa kong available na port 80. Okay, available siya publicly. Okay. 
then we're gonna press OK. So, sasabihin nito, magreklamo siya na yung A port 80 ko daw, ginagamit na. Kasi yung port 80, ginagamit yung default website. Pero okay lang yan. Gagawin natin is, stop natin to. Stop natin yung website na yun. And ito naman yung ating start. There. Now, na-start natin yung website and it should be, um, ito na dapat yung makikita natin. So, pag pinuntaan ulit natin itong, uh, ayan, may access denied. Ayan, so may kinagpigure tayo sa uh, ating IIS. Start up natin siya. Okay, website. Stop po tayo ulit natin and let's retry this one. So tingnan na ulit natin yung IIS kung nag kung nabalik. So may problema ata sa permission. So ang gagawin ko is magpunta na lang tayo dun sa www.root sa iistart.html and i-edit natin to. Okay, and maglagay na lang tayo ng example, yung H1. Okay, so save ko siya. So once na balikan natin siya, makita naman natin uli na yung in-edit ko na website is, ayan na, nagbago na. So may parang may problema lang kanina sa file um, access. So, yeah. Here you are. So, again, so ganun lang siya mag-deploy ng website gamit yung IIS or gamit yung virtual machine. Okay? So, we tackled all this um, information sa demo. So, we spawned the virtual machine. We designed and developed our website and we deployed our, our website to the virtual machine. And we can view our website from the internet browser. So kung may nakatry nga na puntahan yung IP address na yan, makikita nyo nandun yung ano, yung ginawa kong in-edit kong website. Ano po? So it's available in the internet now. So yung other configurations nyo is on another topic. So with that, it's actually the end of part one, which is the introduction to the cloud. Okay. So is there any question? Or anything? Bago tayo mag-proceed. If none, um, if none, then uh, would it be okay for um, we can have a little bit of break? So maybe we can have five minute break. Is that fine, um, uh, hosts or? Okay lang po ba? Sige po, sige po, sir. Okay. So, five-minute break po muna tayo. Let's continue again at 2.45, I guess. Break lang po. Thank you. Ten minutes break. Ten minutes break. 
Kamusta kaya yung mga listener natin? Mga gising pa ba? Mga tulog na yata ito. Sagot muna, sagot, sagot muna kayo. Ayan. Kamusta po kayo? Okay. 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 Kamustahan muna habang wala pa si sir. Carl, kamusta na daw ikaw? Yo, ang ganda naman ng host namin. No? Hindi naman naman. Sana po. Hello. Isip pa, nagbabantay pa ng bata. Oh. Kuya Arl, parang set up natin dito pagka tayo na. Parang <laughs> okay, yun din. Tatantas na, parang natin sila. Medyo nangarag kami ng konti kasi kami yung nao na. Hindi namin alam yung mga set up. So, ano, yan. Ay, yung mga sinasabi nyo, nakarecord to. Live ko ito. Tsaka nakalive din sa Facebook. Tayo. Ay, sa YouTube. Pero okay lang naman. At least, eh, nalaman namin may listener pa kami. May nanonood pa sa namin pa. Ano. Meron pa. Kanina umaga, meron niya eh. Tapos ngayon, meron din. Ayun niya, papalastas nga eh. Para dun sa mga gustong magtanong kay sir uh, sa mga lower year sa ibang section sa ibang ano o kayong may ang magtanong o, sa, kahit sa chat, chat box lang para lang at least malaman natin kung naintindihan nyo o hindi okay lang naman din yon kung ano basta at least share nyo lang kung ano yung gusto nyo malaman Salamat thank you. Po. Thank you. Sa, salamat din sa mga ano, sa mga umatend pala. Uh, malaking tulong sa aming subject yung pag pag ano yung yung host namin na pangiti-ngiti lang. <laughs>
Hello? Okay na po lahat? Nakapag-break? Okay na po. Okay na po. Sige po, let's proceed na. Okay po. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me reshare the screen. And now let's go to our part two, which is your inter um, Internet of Things. Oh, and by the way, nga pala, um, yung ginawa kong kanina is um, yung pag-deploy ng server and pag-host ng website doon sa server na ginawa ko is an example of IAAS or yung eto, infrastructure as a service. Bakit? Kasi yung ginawa natin is hindi tayo nag prepare ng server, tapos hindi tayo bumili ng servers. Kinonfigure lang natin yung kanina, yung network, OS, security, etc. Yara yung hardware, yun bahala na doon yung cloud provider. So hindi ko na siya pinroblema. So ito na lang apat na to, tatlo na to ang pinroblema ko sa pag-deploy. Okay? But there are also other options sa pag-deploy ng website. We can also use platform as a service actually. So in, kaya nga yung question kanina about cloud hosting, um, it means that you host mo yung website mo sa cloud. It means hindi sa particular server. Kasi kanina, yung website na sinhost natin, nasa isang server lang, di ba? Dito sa ginawa kong virtual machine. But by cloud hosting, we're actually um, um, distributing the, the, the website to the hosts or to different or multiple host servers that's deployed in the cloud. So one example jan is yung uh, app service nitong Azure. So another way I can deploy that is via app service. So dito hindi ko na siya kailangan hindi ko na kailangan mag-spawn ng virtual machine. Okay, ang kailangan ko na lang i-upload dito yung aking website. So it's another topic po. Ano po? So introduction lang po tayo. So um itong other things na to is can be on another um probably another topic. Okay? So, ayun. FII lang po. Now, let's proceed sa Internet of Things. Me... Okay. Alright. So, let's proceed now to the Internet of Things and how we can use the cloud um, to use the IoT. So the Internet of Things or IoT in short. So I'll just give a brief introduction also for the Internet of Things para sa mga bago lang sa term na IoT. Okay. So yeah, let's dive right into it. Okay, so sa Internet of Things in IoT. Bakit nga ba natin kailangan ng IoT? And what is its what is its significance and why do we need it? So, let's say for this example, this particular page, nakikita natin yung things na to. Ito yung mga things. May refrigerator, may radio, may oven, may TV, or monitor actually, or yeah, and may aircon at microwave. So, these are considered things. Okay? Now, without IoT, and the usual way now we can operate these devices is by going to each of those devices and then, for example, turning it on, um, turning it off, or anything that we can do with that particular um, device. Okay? So, yun yung uh, when we want to operate things without IoT. Now, with IoT, we can actually interconnect each of these things or devices to each other and then connect them to the cloud. In, and with this, they can, uh, some, um, in theory, talk to each other and communicate with each other and do particular things depending on uh, what it's programmed or designed to do. Okay? So in this example, kita nyo nga po na 
with IoT, it is possible. Possible po na the air condition can talk to the ref and the ref can talk to the monitor and whatnot and it can do anything it's designed to do. So kailangan mo lang i-code yun, syempre. And with that, they are actually sharing data and collaborating and connecting to each other. So before, um, imagine um, way, way back years ago, 10 years or 15 years ago, na um, when things, when smartphones are not a thing yet, wala pa yung iPhone and other smartphones. So ang mga things na kinoconsider natin na nakaka-connect sa internet or yun yung mga nakaka-connect lang sa internet is usually PCs or laptops lang. Yung phone medyo trivial pa nga do- noon that time na makaka-connect sa internet kasi kahit 3G pa lang din naman yung uh, connectivity noon kahit sa data hirap pa that time. So very limited and napaka-konti lang ng mga things na nakaka-connect sa internet. But as time progresses, syempre as we have 4G and even 5G, we can actually, and we, there are increasing and increasing number of devices that can be connected now to the internet. So hindi na lang siya limited sa phone, hindi lang siya limited sa laptop or anything. It's actually um, available now to any device as long as it's designed or it can have this functionality to um to connect to the internet. So yung mga tinatawag nating smart devices. Ano po? So yeah, so with that, so nakita natin kung bakit somehow na may significant yung IoT. Right? Now, what is IoT? The IoT or the Internet of Things describes the network of physical objects or things that are embedded with sensors, softwares, and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the internet. So, ito natin dito sa diagram na to or sa picture image. So, we can see any other objects, any objects. We have a smartwatch, a, um, a camera or security camera, an oven, whatnot, even smart cars. Lahat yan is or can connect to the internet. Kaya nga, uh, Ang term is Internet of Things because these things can connect to the internet via the network, via an embedded software or embedded sensors that are integrated in these particular machines or devices. Okay? And today, we're actually living in a generation of smart objects surrounding us from almost anything that can be considered a smart device. So from the smartphones that we have in our hands and even the satellites and as a space, all these things can connect and interconnect and talk to each other in some form, okay? And these devices can actually be anything, hence the word Internet of Things. It can be anything. And it can be your phone, your watch, your TV, even your car. And anything that can be connected to the Internet can be considered as an IoT device, okay? Now, with this, it is possible now that devices can now have this particular concept. So this first concept is interaction. The devices can now interact and communicate with each other via the network. And also an orchestration. By this, it means that the device can operate in a certain or an orderly fashion based on how they are set up. And next is data sharing. With this, they can also share data with each other and make sense of that particular data. So these devices can share usage, share usage data for better orchestration and whatnot, whatnot. Okay. And with this particular concepts, we can now uh, reduce human intervention in the machine cycle. So with this, mas napapadali ating buhay in a way. Kasi mas, we, the machines can operate in a way that they can do it themselves based on how we program them, of course. Okay. So well, let's have a quick examples of IoT or IoT in action. So I prepared um, three videos here just so you can have a idea of what it's like to have IoT or, be, or having a smart device. So let's go ahead and watch them. Atong una is from Xiaomi, smart home sensor set.
for safe, smart living. You need a Mies Smart Sensor Set. At 7 a.m., the smart plug will turn on the coffee machine. When a window is opened, the door and window sensor will automatically turn off the air purifier. With the temperature and humidity sensor, you can easily check room temperature on the Mi Home app. Pressing the wireless switch changes it to out mode when you leave the house, providing a safe one button security system. When security mode is activated, a stranger opening a door will cause the door and window sensor to notify the hub, which will then trigger the alarm. The security camera will record and send a 12 second video, making your home more secure when you are out. When you return home in the evening, the motion sensor will detect your presence and turn on the Mi Smart Bulb. You can even change the color of the light through your phone, giving you total control to set it as you please. During the night, when the motion sensor is triggered, the night light on the hub will turn on. And the light turns off when no motion is detected. A smarter home and easier life. Yeah. All right. So by the way, ito yung kinuwa ko sa YouTube. Inembed ko lang siya. So I hope we understand uh, some use of the smart sensors, smart devices, or IoT in action in your home. So, yun yung isang offer ni Xiaomi, actually. And let's watch another video here. Ito naman yung kay Mark Zuckerberg, si Jarvis. Ito yung mga ginawa niyang home automation, AI assistant. Good morning, Jarvis. Good morning, Mark. It's Saturday, so you only have five meetings. Room temperature is set to a cool 68 degrees. Earlier this year, I started building a simple AI to help run our home. I talked to Jarvis using this app I built. It uses artificial intelligence to understand me and figure out what to do. Max woke up a few minutes ago. I'm entertaining her. All right, let's go check on her. Good morning, Max. Let's practice our Mandarin. Jarvis, your Mandarin is so soothing. She, she. Jarvis also helps me get ready in the morning. Fresh shirt. Fire in the hole. Hell yeah. Jarvis knows when to make me breakfast. Your toast is ready. All right. It's time for my call with Shrep. Can you get him on the video conference line? Setting up the VC room now. Remember to check on the AI guidance system for Aquila. One of the best things about Jarvis is it can recognize people at the gate, let them in automatically, and then just tell me about it. Mark, your parents are coming in. Thanks, Jeffrey. It's Jarvis. And Jarvis can play all of our favorite music. Hey, play us some good Nickelback songs. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm afraid I can't do that. There are no good Nickelback songs. Good. That was actually a test. Okay, how about just play some songs that our whole family likes? What? I'm a dad now. This is what I listen to. Jarvis also likes to join our family for playtime. Who should we tickle next? I think we should tickle Max. <laughs> I'm also experimenting with other voices. Stop her! She's getting away! Do it now! And if I don't want to talk, I can just text Jarvis through a messenger bot that I built. Mark, I'm trying to read in here! Yeah, my bad. 
So this has been pretty fun, but I need some more ideas for Jarvis, so leave them in the comments and I'll try to build some of them. All right, movie time, Jarvis. You got it, Mark. First, I need to teach you to make me some more popcorn. Okay, so that's another example bo, for Smart Home, developed by Mark Zuckerberg, or I think he's the engineer. And lastly, ito na yung last na video for today. Playing jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, dentist at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. And we're gonna do one more. Oh, yeah. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open. Oh, door. Repeat that. Oh, door. I didn't understand that. Hey, oh, door. Play on the floor. Sing on the floor. Get on the floor. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Error. Hey, there. We're right. Open door. Open door. Okay, so yun yung last example ka sa smart home. So, konting icebreaker lang din yun kasi medyo papun na. Mukha usually mga tao ngayon nagsasiesta. Ano po. So, I hope na kahit na medyo may comedy siya is naintindihan niyo yung concept ng smart home and even IoT. Because so, smart home is uh, is actually an example of of IoT in action. Okay? All right. Now with that, so nakita man natin how each device can interact and there is one particular uh, manager or control center sa kanila na kina, yun yung kinakausap nila, di ba? Like Jarvis or even sa Xiaomi and yung kinakausap nung, nung lalaki dun sa pangatlo. And once they sell the command, these um, um, managers or um, control centers are the one to activate this particular devices that is connected to the internet, okay? So now, let's go to the basic hardware or IoT hardwares. Okay, so for IoT hardware, there's actually three things that are considered as the core components. So the first, these three are the sensors, controllers, and the actuators. Now for the sensors, what it does is it converts some physical phenomenon into an electrical impulse that determines the readings. Yan. So alam naman natin lahat na kung nakagamit na rin kayo ng mga sensor, yung may mga temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and other types of sensors. So these are input devices. Okay. And the controller, which is the one in charge with collecting data from the sensors and executing commands based on this data. So, and, and the other, or the last one is the actuators, which is the one that takes an electrical input and turns it into physical action. So this is um, usually the output output um, device from the sensor, and it actually does a particular um, action based on how it's how it is configured. Okay, so let's look more in deep into it, into this tree. So for the sensors, these are the temperature, for example. These are some samples only. There are actually plenty, plenty more. There is proximity, IR, light, ultrasonic, and a lot, lots, lots and lots of um, uh, information or sensors out there that we can use as an input device. Next is the art, uh, hardware or hardware, the actuators. So actuators are is a machine part that initiates movement by receiving feedback from a control signal. It serves as an interface between the sensor and the actual machine. Okay, so the actuator is actually, um, if you already used hydraulic um, and um, hydraulic actuators or solenoid valves or even relays, things that are, or even the DC motors, those are examples of actuators. They perform a certain action based on a, a certain signal or information that 
it gets. Okay. Now with this, where does the actuator or the uh, and this is the basic um, flow actually and how IoT is set up. Usually the sensor uh, senses things and then sends it to the actuator. And then the actuator then sends that does a particular ad thing in the, the machine. Okay, so this is how usually each component communicates. The sensor detects the data, as I said, and an example here is an air conditioner. So for example, if the sensor um, senses a temperature that's above a certain threshold, say um, 29 degrees or any degrees that you would like, it will, the actuator will then uh, turn on the air conditioner at some degree, okay? Now, where does the control center reside? The control center actually reside between the sensor and the actuator, as you can see in this diagram. So the sensor, as an example earlier, the sensor actually reads temperature and then sends it to the control center. And then the control center, depending on how it's programmed, is gonna do per particular um, action based on the sensor's readings. For this example, it's gonna send data to the cloud. So this is where the cloud comes in. We're gonna use the cloud to send data or we're gonna use the cloud to store, process and um, save data in the cloud. And then uh, if you want, we can put back the action to the control center. And then the control center then um, is connected to an actuator wherein the actuator does this action that will in this example, turn on the machine, which is an air conditioner, all right? So that's where these, this um, control center resides. Now, let's give a, another example on how it works or how it's usually does. So for example, there is a sensor. We have a temperature sensor and the sensor temperature detects the heat. Now, of course, this is not fire. It's just an uh, icon. Uh, saying na mainit, okay? And that sensor sends the temperature data to the control center, okay? And now this control center sends temperature data to the cloud, okay? And then once it's in the cloud, it's gonna process that temperature information. And then you can have a choice to save this particular information to the cloud in a database or send it back to the command uh, to, send back the command to the control center. So one example of this is um, how we, uh, Alexa, if you are familiar with Alexa or Google Home or any other smart um, assistant devices. So what they actually do is connect to the internet. So they process your voice commands based on um, a, um, the information that they will get from the internet, okay? So with that, once it gets the control center, gets the command back from the cloud, it will then send this command to the actuator. The control center will send the command to the actuator. And then the actuator then turns on the air conditioner because it knows that it's kind of getting hot, getting hot, getting hot in here, okay? So that is uh, one example flow of how we can configure IoT. Okay, so basically it's just an input. And then this is will this will process. A process is in the middle, and then the output is on the very right. That's usually how it goes. Okay. Now that we know the basic hardwares or components of an IoT device, let's now look at an the I an IoT architecture. Now there are actually four layers, three layers, and five layers. And for this particular um, seminar, we're going to talk about the four layers of the IR IoT architecture. Okay, so this is the uh, architecture layer here from left to right. Um, the first layer is the perception layer. Next is the network. And next is the data processing layer. And then lastly is the application layer. Okay, so the perception layer is the um, first layer of this architecture. And what it does is, or what it is, is it contains the, the sensing devices. What these are, um, these include the number of sensors and actuators that are used to gather useful information like the temperature, moisture content, intruder detection, sounds, you name it. 
all those things. So the main functionality of this layer is to get, inf get information from the surroundings and to pass the data to another layer, to the next layer actually, so that some actions can be done based on that information. So as I've said, this layer is just to perceive the world around us. Okay, so this, com this makes up the um, sensors and the actuators. The next layer is the network layer. In this layer, it is actually the connecting layer between the perception and the data processing layer. Okay, and it gets data from the perception layer and passes data to the middleware layer using networking technologies like 3G, 4G, UTMS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HTTP protocols or MQTT protocols. All these um, protocols are done in the network layer and they get data from the perception and then pass it to the data processing layer. And the next layer is the data processing layer. In this layer, this is where the storage, the computation, processing, action taking capabilities are done. And based on what it's passed from the network, it will um, show or get this data and save it and store it for uh, the next layer to um, make sense of, okay? So in this layer, we're just saving it and we can also do the data analysis if ever we want in this data processing layer. Um, we want to aggregate data and all that. So these things are being done in the data processing layer. And the last layer is the application layer. Now that we have la the data saved in the data processing layer or it's already, um, the numbers are already punched and created in the data processing layer, then the application layer will then um, read this data or make sense of this data. So in this example, we can use, use um, a web app like a website that we can display the dashboards, the information, the temperature readings and forecasts and all that, depending on the data that's been saved in the data processing layer. Okay. And in this layer, it manages all application, application process based on information obtained from the data processing layer. Okay. And with this, it's in charge with making sense of the data making sense of the data processing layer because in the data processing layer, there are just mostly just numbers and um, into an average reader, it's gonna be like um, probably a jargon or hindi nila maintindihan yung itsura ng data. But with the application layer, this is where we make sense of this layer uh, of this data by making graphs, tables and line charts and all this particular data should you choose to. Okay, there. Now that we've understand the uh, IoT in some sense, and then we understood the architecture and the components, let's talk about how we can use IoT in Azure, in Azure Cloud. So we're gonna do a quick demo again on how we can do this. So we're gonna actually use Platform as a Service, PaaS, to, to use IoT in Azure. So IoT as a service, IoT Hub in Azure. They actually have other IoT services, but this is the most basic as of now. So for this particular demo scenario seminar, I will be using IoT Hub in Azure. What I'm gonna do is register an IoT device, and then we're gonna receive readings from that IoT device. Okay, so let me stop sharing and reshare my screen again. Hold on. Okay. Again, let's go back to the portal. And what we're gonna do is we have a device actually. And for now, I have no, wala akong physical device here in my, uh, Saring ano? Wala ako physical device sa ngayon sa na available. Kaya gagamit ako nitong um, Raspberry Pi Web Simulator. So this is provided by Azure. And this is actually used para mag-practice ng IoT or Raspberry Pi simulations through the web. Talagang ngayong wala pa masyad o hindi ko pa, hindi pa makakabili ng Raspberry Pi. Eh. Um... It might take some time. So 
yeah, for now, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi web simulator. And what this does is this is the temperature sensor. So you can see a temperature and humidity sensor. And, it, and it's just connected to the pins in the Raspberry Pi. And we have a LED here just to see if we are sending data or not. OK, so I have this already set up. So imagine I already set this up in a physical device in a, exactly like how it is shown here. But um, now we're going to wire the Azure, Azure and we're going to get data from this device using Azure. OK, now let's go back to the devices here. And what we're going to do is create another resource. We're going to type in IoT, or we can see here Internet of Things. And these are the IoT um, services you can use for Azure. And AWS actually has lots as well. But for this example, of course, I only have Azure. OK. And now we're going to go to IoT Hub. And what we'll do is, again, set up a device or an IoT Hub that will read a particular device. So IoT, IoT Hub helps us to connect, monitor, and manage IoT assets. OK. And we're going to choose a resource group. And of course, again, we need to choose a server region. We're going to go with Southeast Asia again. And then we entered the IoT Hub name, say IoT device 001 or IoT demo device. OK, with that, let's go next. Let's just use public endpoint for now. And then we get to choose a tier. Now with this, we need to choose um, based on the pricing or how many devices we want to connect, we need to choose a tier, OK? Now, for this example, since this is just a demo, we're going to use the free tier, OK? Now, in free tier, obviously, it's free. As you can see, the cost per month is zero US dollars. So I am nothing to worry about, even if I overuse this service, OK? Now that we created this. Let's go next lang, next lang ulit, then we review and create. Okay, so ito yung ating information. Once we're done, let's create it. There, so we need lang natin ma deploy. So now set up your server natin in Southeast Asian region and setting up this particular resource. OK, now that it's created, or not yet, still in progress. Okay, it's taking some time, so let's just wait a bit. So while we're waiting, we can actually, uh, never mind, it's done. <laughs> OK, so now it's done. Let's go to the resource. And we're going to IoT device demos, demo device 001. And you can see here in this dashboard na yung ating information. And then dito, nakikita natin yung number of messages na meron tayo na nare-receive. Obviously, wala pa kasi hindi pa natin set up. So let's set it up. So we need to put an IoT device now that we have an IoT device, IoT hub. And with this, we're just going to add an, a new device. And we can put the device ID. Um, there. And then all this uh, authentication type, you can 
you can choose any of this, but for now, let's stay with the symmetric key. There, now it's saved. Now we have a device that's enabled. Now, how do we connect this device to this um, IoT Hub? Now, sa IoT Hub, meron tayong primary connection string. In the primary connection string uh, shows this and information. And kailangan lang natin is copy yan. And then we go to the site that we to the Raspberry Pi natin. So imagine kinocode mo rin to sa sarili mong device and you just copy this connection string, mag-paste ka dyan ng connection string mo and it should be good to go. What we do is we just run this. Yan. So what it does, kinikita naman natin na it sends message, sending message to the IoT Hub. It's sent to Azure IoT Hub. And ang ginisend niya is message ID, device ID, Raspberry Pi web client, and temperature and the humidity. And it's sending it via MQTT, by the way, kasi yung protocol na ginamit is MQTT over the network or the internet. Okay, so stop natin. Now, how do we see if we had, um, if we already get information from the from that device? Dapat tataas to, but unfortunately, medyo nagana siya, matagal siya, bago makita dito sa dashboard. But it should be seen here in the number of messages that's been used. Okay, so with that, uh, let's just wait for that. But while we're waiting, let's go back to our slide. And what we did is actually create the IoT Hub in Azure, then register an IoT device, then receive the readings from the IoT device. Okay. Now, in the next section, actually, there's a uh, another demo for an an, a little bit advanced. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create an Azure SQL Server for storing and reading data from the IoT device. Now we want to save the IoT, the temperature and the humidity information from the sensor to and save it to Azure SQL or SQL Server. And then we're going to create an Azure Stream Analytics to stream IoT Hub readings to SQL Server. So for now, these are um, services from Azure and let's not worry about them exactly for now. And next is we need to view the table from SSMS or um, SQL Studio Management, SQL Server Management Studio. So it's just used to view um, SQLs and then we view the reading data from a web app. Okay, so with this, um, I already actually set up a SQL in Azure, and what it what I did is just set up this set up this um, particular database, and then the temper and then a table here, a telemetry temperature, and what it does is just gets this message ID, device ID, temperature, humidity, and log date, based on the messages here on the that it gets from IoT Hub. Okay. Now, if you can, re I, now that I have refreshed this, you can see here, now we have three messages that was, that has been received from the cloud. So this is the one that's been sent by our device here. So it takes a little bit of time, but um, it does what it does. And here it is. Now we read it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we let's go do, let's go do the advance and what we're, and what I've already done is I've already set up a uh, a SQL server right here. SQL D, uh, named it SQL DB Monitoring Dev. So I won't have to go. I don't have to go through the exactly how I set it up because it's gonna make take more time. But it's already set up. Let's imagine we already have the string connection, and then we have um, this stream analytics. We're on step number two, creating Azure Stream Analytics. So Stream Analytics is actually just like, like a middleware. What it does is take an input and then produces an output based on that input. Now, what we're going to do here is on the inputs, we're going to use the, we're going to use the IoT Hub as an input. So for now, let's delete this. 
let's have another stream input from IoT Hub. And I will choose the one that I've created earlier, which is IoT device, demo device 001. The one that I've created earlier. I'm gonna put input alias. Okay, then that's save. So I chose IoT demo device 001. Now that I got the input, now what it means is I'm gonna take inputs, I'm gonna take the messages na sinesend ng from IoT Hub, and then sa outputs naman, i-output ko siya sa SQL database. So I already set up the database here, and I chose, gagawin lang naman, mag-add, add, and then add SQL database, and then choose the database. So in my usage, I use the SQL database na sinetup ko na kanina. Okay. And what we're going to do is um, on the query, here on the query, we are choosing which input from and which output to. Now, these are the columns that I want to choose only, the message ID, device ID, temperature, and humidity. And I want to get them. I want to select these particular columns from input demo device 001, which is the IoT hub the input, and then I want to output them into the SQL database, okay? So once done, I'm just gonna start this again. I'm gonna start the uh, stream analytics job. Then what it does, it's just gonna run continuously. It will stream as, if, as the, as the uh, name suggests, it's gonna stream, wait for data to be inputted. And then once there's our input data from the IoT Hub, it's gonna output them. So let's just wait a bit, it's gonna start. It's um, starting. Now while we're waiting, I already have here the, ta the table. And once we select here, this is an empty table for now. So I can just show you that it's actually still saving here. And it's indeed saving here. Okay. Now it's taking some time. So while we wait, maybe may mga tanong dyan or questions, clarifications habang naghihintay regarding IoT. You can speak if you want or chat. Sir. Sure. Yes. Connected po kayo sa, no, sa, sa Microsoft? Um, connected as in may affiliation? I mean, nagtatrabaho o ano? Well, not directly sa Microsoft. Um, ginagamit ko lang yung products nila. Ah, yun kasi, sir. Ah, bali, gamit nyo nga yung, yung product nila, kaya natanong ko lang. Kasi na-invite na kami dyan na Siguro mga matagal na na mag mag-attend din ng seminar sa ng sa product na 'yan. Oh. Eh, nag-try din kami. Binigyan kami ng one day account. Na nag-try kami nung ginawa niyo kanina. Mm -hmm. Yung pag paggamit ng kanilang cloud, virtual machine. Yes sir, yung pati yung okay. virtual machine. Okay. So na-enjoy niyo ba? <laughs> Or na-appreciate? Yung... Uh, ano kasi sir, di ba, ang mahal kasi. Ayun lang, yung tatagayin nga lang tayo sa, sa presyo ng subscription. Tsaka, pero in the long run naman, it's a good it's a good investment, lalo pag company. Kasi, ayun nga, yung, we're actually using the cloud naman. So our cost is varying. Pay as you go tayo. So, nag a adjust, adjust naman yung ating consumption ng device based dun sa paggamit natin. Ang ano lang, constant lang is yung subscription, yung monthly subscription natin dun sa sa service sa cloud nila. Ayun. In, tsaka ang isa pa sir, yung lahat ng gagamitin mo na, no? Uh, lahat. Siyempre, license dapat sa kanila. Mm, lahat ng cloud? No, I mean, yung platform, lahat. Pati servers, yung Uh, ano ba ang tawag dito? Yung programming language ginagamit. Mm. 
Well, in a way, yes. Medyo kulong siya sa Microsoft .NET, .NET na code. Pero yes, yeah. possible pa rin naman na yung magamit mo rin yung ibang ano ibang language such as Java or any other language actually. Kasi agnostic yeah. naman yung cloud in a way. Pero mas sinosupport ng Microsoft yung sarili nilang products. Kaya mas integrated yung Azure services dun sa Microsoft. For example, itong Microsoft Visual Studio. Since Microsoft yan, mas sinosupport nila yung Azure cloud compared sa AWS or sa Google, Google um, Cloud Platform. So, hindi siya straightforward, pero possible pa rin siya in a way. Dawat pala, sir, tinatag natin yung Microsoft para, <laughs> para meron pa ka naman. <laughs> Sponsor nila tayo, no? <laughs> no. Sige, sir. Salamat po. Sige. So, ayan. Okay na pala. May question pa. Nagraran na siya. So, habang nagraran siya, kita natin real-time yan. Kung may mga inputs and yung may mga outputs kahit kung may errors. Okay. So, so ngayon, wala pa. Now, um, pinos ko, in-stop ko kanina yung um, in-stop ko kanina yung Raspberry Pi simulator. Ngayon, let's continue that. Yan. So, patuloy na mag-send uli yan sa IoT Hub. And what it's gonna do is gonna send messages to IoT Hub. Tapos, um, yung IoT Hub naman, since input siya nitong stream analytics, kukunin niya yung mga inputs niya sa device dun sa IoT. Tapos, isesend niya naman sa SQL database, yung sinetup kong output. Okay, so ito yung isang example ng orchestration kasi I used IoT Hub plus stream analytics plus Azure SQL. So, yeah. So, intayin lang natin na kung may mangyari na. Refresh natin. So, medyo matagal pa rin. So, hintay lang natin ulit na mag-read siya. Pero as we wait, uh, dito rin natin makikita kung, ayan na, nag-save na pala. Yan. So, nakita natin kanina, walang laman, di ba? So, ngayon, magkakalaman na. Ito yung mga message na sinesend dito sa IoT Hub kung papansin natin. Stop na natin. Ito yung message ID 36, device ID, Raspberry Pi, temperature, and humidity. Lahat yon na-record ko sa database ko. Yan na. Alright. So, habang nag-stream siya, patuloy siya nang nagsisave na nagsisave. So, ngayon, sinistop ko muna. And kung pabansin nyo yung isa sa <coughs> excuse me, stream analytics, ang tagal na mag-view. Ayan. Inano na natin. Minaximize. So, kita natin na may mga daming input events na nangyari. There are already three. And tapos mayroon ng isang in-output. So medyo bagal yung pag-stream niya per minute ata to. Pero madami na nangyari lang sa isang minute na yun. Okay? So what we already did here now is nag-stream tayo. Kumuha tayo ng, re tayo ng data sa sensor. And then sinesave natin sa Azure SQL via Stream Analytics. Tapos review natin sa SSMS. Ito nga pala yung SSMS by the way. This is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Pag-view lang yan ng data. Okay, now what we're gonna do is view the reading data from a web app. Now, for example, meron na, ayun, sabi ko kanina na nakasave na siya sa database, di ba? So, para sa normal users or sa mga customers natin, hindi, natin mamimake, hindi nila mamimake sense kung anong ibig sabihin nito. Kung ano yung, ano ba to, para saan ba to, para saan pong mga numbers na yan, di ba? Kaya, ngayon, nakasave na siya dyan sa application layer, pwede natin ikunin yung data na yan. So, nagawa ko ng sample data dito gamit ng Razor or Blazor, gamit ang uh, C Sharp na .NET. So, nag-code ako ng konting website. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting this data from that database. Accessible, uh, na-access ko siya via this um, host. Okay? Yeah. So, this is an example app. This is a, ito yung de de default nila. Tapos, mata ko sa fetch sensor readings. And makikita nyo dito, yung bawat entry na nandito sa aking table to 36, nandito siya. So, finefesh ko siya doon. Okay. So, ngayon, nasa application layer na siya. Ngayon, pwede na siyang gawa ng graph 
or gawa ng line graph or pie, pie chart, etc. or ano man, depende doon sa anong gusto makita ng customer nyo. So, pwede na siyang bigyan ng visualization, kumbaga. So, with that, uh, kita natin yung end-to-end on how we can set up the IoT in the cloud and in, IoT, in Azure SQL in particular. Okay? And, yep. So, tapos na natin yon And, para lang mas malinaw pa, ito yung actually what we did. So we have a temperature sensor, yung kaninang temperature na connect sa Raspberry Pi. And what it does is it sends this data to uh, the control center. Ang control center natin is yung Raspberry Pi. So siya nakakonect siya recta doon. Okay, and then the Raspberry Pi sends an MQTT data to the cloud, to the cloud, sends the temperature data. Temperature and humidity, by the way. So, sinesend niya sa Azure in our example. And then, yung Azure, sinet up natin na uh, magsisave kada receive niya ng, ng temperature and humidity, kada save niya sa Azure, uh, kada receive niya, isisave niya natin siya sa database, which is yung kanina. And then, these database are accessed by us from the application layer via yung web app na ginawa ko kanina. So, mabilis hindi ko na, it's a quick code lang and we just fetch this data and then displays this data on a table. Okay? Now, yung hindi natin ginawa is yung paggawa ng actuator tsaka machine. Dapat actually, um, for example, yung temperature, nakareach na temperature above 25, 29, pwede natin gamitin yung Raspi na mag na connect natin yung actuator tapos yung actuator na, or actuator pwede relay, relay switch connect natin sa Raspi, tapos yung switch na yon, yung relay switch na yun, mag-on, i-on niya yung machine na nakakonect sa kanya. So, out of scope yun sa atin ngayon kasi hindi ako nakabili ng mga gamit. Alright? With that, let me just, that's actually all. That's actually the end of the IoT. And this is the, I just want to end with a quote here na kay galing kay Grad Jared Newman. It says here that smart homes and other connected products won't be just be aimed at home life. They'll also have a major impact on the business. And just like any company that, bliss, that blissfully ignored the internet at the turn of the century, the ones that dismiss the internet of things risk getting left behind. Yeah. So it's something like, it's very, in a way, medyo powerful siya na, na quotation. Kasi nga naman, um, let's give an example here na na yung IoT in action, di ba? So yung ating, for example, sa Lazada, tayo ay nag, nag-umorder. So pag in-order natin yung Lazada, sa Lazada, nakikita natin may tracking, di ba? May tracking yung delivery kung nasaan na. Saan na yung parcel mo? Nasa, ano pa ba? Nasa warehouse or in transit na or nasa um, kung saan man, di ba? So kung wala yung IoT, kung hindi walang GPS sensor yung mga trucks or delivery events whatever na inilagay nila hindi nila hindi natin malalaman kung nasaan na yung package natin di ba hindi natin malalaman baka mamaya saan saan naligaw kaya na isa sa sa mga naipit sa Suez Canal dun sa sa ship na yon ano so yo we won't know this so in a way in order to cope with with the ever um um growing technology in our generation Siyempre, IoT is a big uh, impact to it. Kaya meron na tayong next term na Internet of Everything actually. So Internet of Everything, halos everything na may pwede na i-connect sa internet, hindi na things lang. So imagine in the next uh, couple of years. Ano po? So that's, so yeah, so that is the IoT and how we can leverage it to the cloud. And actually that concludes my um, seminar or discussion regarding the cloud and internet of things and if there are any questions you can ask now or if you if you want you can also find me in this um, contact information so thank you very much and have a good day Uh, thank you so much, Engineer Katapang. Uh, 
Maraming salamat po at kay napakalaking bahagi po sa sa seminar namin. Any questions po? Pakiyan na lang po sa comment box po natin. So, yan. Kung wala na po tayong ibang tanong, uh, po-proceed na po tayo sa sa ano po, awarding of certificate. To award the certificate of appreciation, may I call Ms. Herushalayam Nalding for awarding of the certificate. Hi, good Hi, afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, for the awarding of a uh, certificate of appreciation, okay, my mic is echoing. <laughs> share the screen. Let me just um share my screen. Um, certificate of Appreciation. The certificate is presented to Engineer Jonel Joseph Katapang for sharing his valuable knowledge as a resource speaker during the webinar Cloud Computing, a discussion on leveraging cloud technology for IoT devices held on April 17, 2021. This is signed by me, uh, Access Mayor, by our program head, Engineer Maria Teresa Prenda, uh, Dr. Jovel Hobeliano, our Vice President in um, Academic Affairs, and uh, our PCC President, Mr. Michael Ilirio. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Sir Janelle. And also, I'm sorry, <laughs> am I echoing? Yes, a bit. Thank you, Mayor Perushilayo Nalin. And for the closing remarks, may I call again, Ms. Perushilayo Nalin. Okay. <laughs> no, wala na po ba yung echo? <laughs> um, for our closing remarks, uh, yun nga po for uh time span of uh 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. sobrang daming uh learning yung yung mga nakuha natin mula kay engineer. Uh, katapang. Um, am I, I am told that uh, you're a good uh, mentor niya daw po. Kasi po, uh, my cousin is uh, one of your workmate. Ah, yes. Si Ron? Uh, Ron Natividad daw po. Ah, yeah. And <laughs> Abanggit niya nga. Yun po. So, thank you po sa lahat ng learning which is timely po and magagamit din po namin for our uh, future papers sa mga thesis. <laughs> So, yun nga po, puro po kami IOT ngayon and yun po, ma sobrang dami po namin napulot sa inyong um, dito sa webinar na ito. And also, thank you po sa uh, fifth year, uh, our grade graduating students na nag-ayos po nito kahit nga po yung sabi nila na uh, for a short period of time na po nila napaghandaan ay ito po at natapos pa rin and congrats po sa ating graduating students and also to our to uh, access kay Mama Tat Prenda for letting us uh, do this webinar and also Tanawan City College. Yun po, thank you and sa lahat po ng umatend at nakioperate, nakiparticipate thank you very much po. Ayan po. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, tara muna mag-group picture. Paki-turn on ng mga camera. Organizers, paki-screenshot. Sana yung iba ay ayos. <laughs> Yung mga nag-organize, kayo na yung mag-screenshot ha. Paki-turn on ng camera para makasali kayo sa group picture. <laughs> Ano ba ko na ba ko Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank Thank you, sir. 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 Tapos na ba? Yes, Pwede ma'am. nang mag-goodbye. Give na 